Welcome back, hour number three. We're going to do our Monday night Fukushima report update. Only the worst calamity in recorded human history caused by us, and perhaps only the first of several similar catastrophes which are just around the corner. Uh, I'll tell you, there are a lot of potentials out there. These plants are old, they're rickety, they're rusting, they're rotting, the pipes no longer fit together, they're leaking. God only knows what kinds of things are potentially about to go with dozens and dozens of these plants here, just just here in the United States. Oops, excuse me, formerly United States. I always do that. Force of habit, you know. Uh, Yoshi Shimatsu is standing by, and he is, uh, without question, in my humble estimation, the world's number one most important authority on the Fukushima calamity that there probably ever will be. And we have proven that, I think, in the amount of information, perspective, and uh, extraordinary writings that he has contributed to Rents.com over the past four years now about this disaster. Hello, my friend. Welcome back. Hi there. I'm in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, just at a conference, a peace conference, where I did get a chance to mention Fukushima and the disaster and, and uh, many of the people being peace activists mentioned the um, the uh, military-related weapons development at yeah. suspected sites inside the fu- larger Fukushima complex, which uh-huh. is uh, even uh-huh. parts of it outside of Fukushima pro- uh, mm-hmm. uh, prefectures, not far out, but uh, hidden sites, which uh, we've become aware of because of massive radiation levels. And the fact that people, uh, rescuers could not get into some of these sites and the massive excavation work, uh, that's been done. Just left Germany, of course, and we talked with you about that, uh, last yeah. week, right? Yeah. From Germany. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Angela, Angela Merkel, the, uh, president of Germany is now in Japan, just meeting with Shinzo Abe, where wow. she warned him about his, uh, bad relationships with China and Korea because Obviously, if relation, if he did not antagonize his neighbors so much, uh, to justify this illegal, uh, unconstitutional, uh, weapons program, Fukushima, which contributed to the disaster, was not the sole cause of the disaster by any means, but explains the massive and yet to be reported more massive releases of radioactive materials, including massively, uh, very, very uh, enriched plutonium and, and tons of it, you know, uh, being released out of Fukushima, which is so deadly. Oh, the other point, Jeff, is you call mm-hmm. yourself uh, humble. You should not be humble. You should be quite proud of the work that you've done since the very day of 311. And the anniversary, of course, is tomorrow, at least mm-hmm. here in Asia. It'll be two days yeah. uh, over there in uh, the United States because of the time, uh, the time difference. But uh, you should be extremely proud. This is some of your finest work that you've ever done. I've been, I've been, uh, following your site since 1995. My goodness. When, uh, wow. when the, uh, 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 the Japanese government at the end of that, in 1995, by the way, I had the most successful, uh, most popular website in the new internet news, uh, department, mm-hmm. uh, ever. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, a lot of it focused on the Tokyo subway gassing, which also dealt with the nuclear issues uh, at yes. Tokaimura yes. when the members of the cult actually inside the nuclear plant weapons developers released, uh, deliberately released radiation twice. And some of that did reach Tokyo, and we're the only ones to report that on our website. But that I, re- I remember stuff. your website. You were you were the yeah. only one doing it. There was no one else yeah, doing it. Yeah, that was Archipelago. But yeah. before that, we had the Japan Times Weekly uh-huh. website, which was, you know, massively popular. Uh, we were three times uh, more hits than the nearest contender, which was a men's magazine, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and then that was five times ahead of anything else. So we were way out in the lead. Yeah. Uh, it was a one-horse race. And then, then Dentsu, the, uh, world, at that time, the world's largest advertising company, mm-hmm. visited our newspaper management office and told the managers there, uh, we, Dentsu, need to control the top five sites in Japan for advertising purposes, for online advertising, new field. We want to control the top, decide who's going to be fitting those five top sites. Mm-hmm. And therefore, mm-hmm. you have to unplug your website. Otherwise, 
consequences will be that the Japan Times will receive no advertising. And we had a contract with Dentsu where they were our sole I see. advertising company. In other words, they were going to shut, basically, mm-hmm. take Pull away every, sure. yes, from our newspaper, mm-hmm. you know, and basically starve it of funds and destroy it if we did not turn over our website. So the management talked to me, and I told them, look, you, you managers didn't have to do it, but you toughed it out uh, during the subway gassing when everyone else folded. You allowed me to continue investigation. We have put top politicians in jail and implicated many others. Mm-hmm. We have shown the truth, and it's on record. And uh, I cannot see you now all be fired, basically uh, uh, leave your company. Your company be dead. This company is the only one that allowed this to go on for more than a year. So, therefore, I owe you guys something. Yeah, I owe you something for that uh, press freedom. And, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to shut down the site, and I'll start a new one. And, and that, you know, that was that, uh-huh. you see? Uh-huh. And uh, at the time I was following your site, I mean, there was a huge number of scandals then, right? I mean, Well, I was getting United my news States. from you. That's where I was getting yeah, my yeah. news. So, yeah, yeah, and we were picking up stuff from you. And that was the early days of Internet news, really yeah. the earliest. I mean, there was other stuff earlier, but it was like uh, not not quite as well composed or developed in terms of internet news. There were right. a lot of well, that's like when the uh, alien sites, all that stuff. But I'm talking about yeah. the actual delivering the hard news on the tough stories. '95 really was, oh, I think, a banner year for you know where online news. Oh, I think I think you're right. It, it it, yeah, well, it was too, still too early for the controllers to have thoroughly penetrated everything it, by exactly. then. Exactly. That was, and yeah. that was. 20 yeah. years ago, can you uh, believe that? No. 20 years ago we were doing that, and we were the pioneers in serious news, doing the hard-hitting stories. That's that true. Was- uh, I guess we were. My my site was called sightings.com then, and I yeah, switched right. it to rents. Right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, it's yeah. funny. I never knew until now that you were yeah. my... My colleague in Japan yeah. who was bringing the the Om Sham Rikyo out and all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were, we were, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's we don't fun. brag about our post password, but being the 20th anniversary of the subway gassing, I suppose I should write, you know, it's coming up uh, fairly soon, later this month, the 25th. I'll yeah. try to do a series of articles of what we reported and sort of look back how we have amended the, the oh yeah know, excellent the, well we were in the middle of a massive news blackout you remember and cover up oh, and yeah. the, uh, disinformation everyone was scrambling because every intelligence agency in the world had their fingers in the Om Shin Rikyo pie there you know the nerve gas pie yes, the weapon you know, yeah. and so we were going really up against a global cover up as extensive as the one we are now facing. Unfortunately, we don't have the, uh, something comparable to the Japan Times Weekly there that could be a press that could, you know, uh, stand up to all these forces. So it's uh, it's now all online. You know, we've got to do it. So it's been 20 oh, years. True. Wow. No progress in press freedom. If anything, uh, oh no, we lost press freedom then, and then yeah. the very limited press freedom we had back then. You know? Yeah. 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 Very well so. summed up and all true. Absolutely all true. Yeah, so well, I expect see, more stuff. A, I'll try to crank it out when I get back. Yo, Yoichi, and, uh, get my head together. Yo, yeah? Uh-huh. yeah, Yoichi Shimatsu and Jeff Rents together again. <laughs> yeah, we were the pioneers, <laughs> and we were in, in those days. It was so hectic putting together. Oh, all oh yeah, sites. we never even communicate with it. I mean, it was just hard just to get to the next story. I mean, those were the real pioneering days. Yeah, and we had all kinds. Of, you know, you have formatting problems. We had guys oh, yeah. trying to shut us down even early then. We had, yeah, yeah. and just getting people to write the news for us, you know, uh, pick up the news was not easy because not everything was online like it is today. You know, we had to actually transcribe things. I, I know you did. You transcribed a lot of stuff, you know, just uh, it's, by hand. It's, from, uh, from, Yoshi, uh, it's, uh, it's, sources, yeah? it's so easy today. That's why there's so damn many websites that are just, all they do is take stuff from somebody else and put yeah. a new title on it. And run it around, and it's and there's so many government operations, and and yeah. uh, it's just sickening. Well, there are many claimants and contenders. There's many fakes. There's many troll sites. There's many oh, disinfo yeah. sites. But I do think uh, your website remains the uh, world champion in this area of internet news. You know, a world champion. 
in uh, Thank you. in providing truthful news to people without a agenda, without deception, without any of that stuff going on. You know, so no, it's, it ain't, it's been a twenty year. It's been a twenty year. Reign. I know you started yeah. earlier than that, but I'm just yeah. saying about ninety five was when it, uh, the world finally started to. Right. That's when I, again I said by the end of ninety five, the big advertising agencies were starting to realize. There's they money have here, to take us folks. serious. Yeah, they've yeah. had to take us seriously. That this is a real medium. People were scoffing. Still, at the beginning of '95, people were scoffing at online. It has no they chance were. against print media. Oh. Remember? At the oh, end absolutely. Of 95, by the yeah. end of '95, '95 was a knockout year. We were breaking huge stories that they couldn't keep up with, and also they had to put the lid on us. They realized unless they put advertising into the online press. There was no way they could control the online press. You got that? That's why Dentsu had to barge in. They had to stop our flow of Om Shin Rikyo story, the truth, that mm-hmm. it was a run by politicians, it's an artificial sect, it was a manufactured sect, that it wasn't exactly sarin that was used, you know, they, uh, that in fact it was a decoy program. We, we exposed so much. That was international. They had ties to Yeltsin's national security advisor uh-huh. that, you know, uh, they had massive ties to the Japanese government, including Shinzo Abe's father. And as I was moving on to get Shinzo Abe, as we were finding out about his activities, working with the Om Shin Rikyo in Kobe and in New York City at the Jetro office there, that's when they advertised. He, he, uh, Dentsu, uh, provided publicity for him, tried to hire a lot of foreigners to front mm-hmm. for him. He's a nice guy along. That's when they shut us down. They, that, he was their last uh, the the young champion that because his father had dead we could not nail his father he was dead you know he couldn't we couldn't put him in prison mm-hmm. otherwise he would surely be in prison Shinzo Abe's his whole thing would have been discredited because mm-hmm. we would we were uncovering then after the big scientist home scientist Morai was assassinated to protect Shinzo Abe okay the oh uh, he, wow. uh, uh, Hideo Morai was assassinated because he was going to tell us everything because he worked for Shinzo Abe at Kobe Steel. That was his first job doing weapons technology there at Kobe Steel, okay, in Kobe. And that's where this guy Hayakawa, the weapons dealer, was also active, the guy who went to North Korea 20 times to deliver sarin to North Korea. Sarin that gas. doesn't matter where you are, Yoshi, they kill yep. people. They kill they, people. They silence. They kill. They kill their own people, the insiders. They've got to get rid of them. Five of the senior Ukraine Kiev politicians have recently yeah. committed suicide. I don't know if you saw that or not. Not surprising. Yeah. I mean, this is that 250 to $400 uh, billion dollar debt, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, Ukraine has. It has an unpayable debt. Money's gone down rat holes, okay? Yep. And then the connections with Toshiba Westinghouse, this uh, nuclear accident out there, the world's uh, you know third largest nuclear plant, which you know uh, is in danger. I mean, this is right south of uh, Chernobyl. There will not be a re- uh, Ukraine left if they keep going on with these uh, illegal mock fuel tests. You know, uh, uh, the, the the country is on the verge of national extinction, and it this is. has nothing to do it with is. Russia. Russia's nothing to do border. with no nothing to do with. Oh, Russia. Yeah. If you guys don't get in the, we're not going to endanger, you know, Moscow and the rest of Russia because you idiots are are trying to install mock fuel uh, in, uh, rods and then talking about massive mock fuel plant and you're planning to put Fukushima radio uh, 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 destroyed fuel rods melt melted down rods into Ukraine. You're not going to turn Eastern Europe into a dead zone and Russia into a dead zone. And so I think there's an underlying subtext to this whole thing. No one's talking about because Russia is not going to broadcast about their nuclear industry and all. So no one is, but no, they no obviously are. Very, they know the situation, you know. And right now I've heard that they're reverse. You know, what's amazing is these guys who they're the responsible for the uh, reactor three explosion at Fukushima four years ago. Okay, sure. they're responsible for this. Right now, you know what they're doing? They're reverse engineering the Russian nuclear plants in Ukraine. They're reverse oh, engineering. So they can see, you know, mm. what can we use there? How cheaply can we convert this stuff to a MOX plant? I mean, and these are plants, most of those plants are way beyond there. They have a 40-year, okay, 40-year yeah. lifetime. They're way beyond That's MOX. Yes, they are. And, okay. and, they're, and, and they don't know how to run these plants. They don't know this. So they're actually taking some of these reactors apart to figure out how they work and how they can convert them to, uh, to MOX fuel. I mean, you They're know, insane. Uh, I mean, 
completely yeah, insane. This, exactly. I mean, this is beyond. I mean, this is not engineering. This is madness. This is technological. I mean, this is this is you know. Yeah. So concerns, you know, deep concerns about what is, what, this is a nuclear industry. Are, are, you know, you one thing you know, people in Japan notice TV viewers that mm. all these nuclear experts who come out. Uh, they have this strange gaze in their eyes. They talk funny. They slur. Mm-hmm. Their, you know, their neckties are a little bit off. Their <laughs> eyes are certain. In other words, it affects your brain. Radiation yep. affects your brain. It kind of catches guys, up with you, folks. Yeah, we got to understand what these people are. This is like the play Marat Saad or that play Eliza Grace. The, 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 it, the, the psychotic have taken the homicidal psychotics have taken over the insane asylum, okay? And the doctors are in jail. They have. Okay? You got it. That's you what's got happening. It. Yeah. And we are the doctors here. You know, we're on the fringe. We're outside. They get, they're trying to keep us under lock and key, and we're trying to break out and warn the world. That's what, you know, they're, they're, you know, too it's damn not going to be contained inside an insane asylum called the nuclear industry. Yeah. These guys are going to kill everybody on the planet. And to save themselves, they'll do it. They believe so much in themselves. We, they we, so right, right now, Right this minute, Yochi, we are uh-huh. closer to mass extinction on this planet, given Kiev nuclear war potential, yeah. given all these yeah. aging, rotten nuclear reactors, yeah. all these plants. We are we are on borrowed time. I've said it before. Well, let's put this up. We're not about to see it. We've got one step right into the extinction event with Fukushima. You know, we're already, where, one you know, foot is in it. Yeah. Yep. And the other foot is sort of, of trying to step into that zone yeah. of uh, absolute death for the, everything on this planet, you know, and starting over again with bacteria in the tree. Well, you know, what's really weird is life won't start over again because what's happening in the Japan and the Philippine trench is that the radionucleotides there are working their way down. It's going to kill... The life which is in those volcanic ventures where life, uh, where life began, you know, theoretically, but whatever. Good so there point. will not be, life Cru- will crucial be terminated point. right from the bottom. bottom Cru- of the crucial field. point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And no, nobody's thing, talking yeah. about this. What happened to, uh, people like Arnie Gunderson? What, where did they all get talked to? Well, okay. I got to give credit to Arnie that he, at least he's admitting there was some sort of Nuclear reaction inside the reactors. It wasn't hydrogen gas explosion. He has to done blow that. Off, to crack and blow the cap off the reactor. So that is a step forward for him. So, you know, I should not, you know, I appreciate, even though people reluctantly don't want to admit that, you know, there's a fusion fission reaction going on in, inside of a damaged reactor, uh-huh. at least taking that step begins to open the door to what I, I just wish these speaker uh, these people would speak out. I just wish they would yeah. stand up and tell it yeah. like it is. Yeah. They no, hedge the and they I hum mean, and they haw. I hate to yeah, I know. I wish they would just do it and it came late three years after. I mean yeah. we were talking about this within thirty days of this event, if I recall, you know, that there was a nuclear you're, you're you darn were right we were cloud. Yeah, yes you we were. were. About mushroom cloud. Absolutely we were the possibility yep. of some sort of uh, a nuclear reaction of the type we had not yet seen yet, and now we understand it more as a fusion reaction of tritium and deuterium, which are forms of hydrogen, which then trigger the little particle of melted down yeah. plutonium. Had that occurred at a slightly larger scale, uh, not inside the, uh, the venting areas where the escape gas would go, but mm-hmm. in the bubbling mix of the reactors, right. we would have seen 15 reactors along the Pacific coast uh, have a chain reaction all blow up, 90 tons of uh, uh, fissile material in each, and also the reactor aboard the Ronald Reagan, USS Ronald Reagan, carrier Ronald Reagan in George Washington, would have also blown up. Okay? Consider that, folks. Seven, uh, 15 reactors plus reactors aboard two nuclear aircraft carriers. Well, the Reagan. Up in the nitron, uh, neutron bombardment, every yeah. power plant, every uh, car, everything that runs, uh, every computer all across northern Japan. And, and Tokyo area shut yeah. down, no electronics at all, no lights, no power. And now to concept on March 12th, he was ready within a two hour notice to sign an executive order mm-hmm. to evacuate 50 million people out of that area. He was. Yeah, he was. He said this in San Diego. And he at, should have. On the, right before this, uh, San Onofre. He couldn't say yeah. this in Japan. No. Uh, but in, that's, uh, in I San remember Diego, when he was here. City yeah. supervisors there. Yeah, yeah, he said this stuff. And that is a scenario 
we face in the next nuclear disaster to come. Okay, this is going to happen. Okay, this is inevitable because we know the science now. In a steam reactor, that will happen. In a pressurized steam reactor, we have boiling water reactors, so the venting is a lot. The, the, there's a lot less pressure. And steam reactor mm-hmm. is like a nuclear bomb inside there. What's uh, what's really amazing is the United States Navy and the Pentagon continue to play games. They lost a supercarrier, a nuclear-powered supercarrier, yeah. and they spent 18 months trying to clean it and rehabilitate it, and they failed. It's gone. It's Might a as well piece of radioactive steel junk sitting in San Diego Bay there, and it shouldn't even sit there. No. It is, a, you know, it is irradiating the. Yeah, they should. The they city. should take it out in the middle of the ocean and sink it. They gotta sink it. Yeah, they should sink it. Everything, all the electronics that were gone. The, the uh, what really got the crew is that the desalination system. Okay, they were oh, they when they realized there was airborne radiation and weapons grade plutonium in the air, massive amounts. They ran. They thought that someone had done a nuclear strike against Fukushima. They little did they know this weapons production. Uh, yeah. in plutonium enrichment going on in that whole area. Right. They ran, but they didn't realize then that the sea was that contaminated. They continued to use the desalination system, and as a result, the crew got entirely irradiated in their drinking water and in their showers and in the water used. A lot of that food aboard is dehydrated uh, food, you know? Sure. To reconstitute the food and all yeah. that, and to cook yeah. the food, the soups and all. They had so much radiation in there and that's why so many sailors so many more than who filed the law case are now coming down they are coming down with you know terrible uh terrible uh, cancers well they're dying uh, 500 the female, at least the female sailors what's happening with them especially oh. the ones that have gotten pregnant that is unspeakable we don't even want to yeah. you know we we can't even publish or print you know print the stuff no one dares Shows photos of the embryo. Okay. No one dares tell the Which truth. Which the doc- Hong Kong doctors, girls who went to Hong Kong, said, "Do not look human. They do not look human." Okay. God. All right. We're going to take yeah. a break now. Uh, we're going to say yeah. good night uh, to you on this particular visit. You've got things to do, yeah. I guess. Uh, we got yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dana, yeah. Dana Dernford uh, standing by. Yochi, uh, I salute you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and four uh, years. best wishes to you and Dana on this coming yeah. anniversary of yeah. the fourth uh, fourth year uh, after the Fukushima. Yeah. All right. You take care of yourself. Right. Talk to All you right. next time. All right. Thank you very much. Good night. The true, true hero of our times. All right, we'll be back. Okay, and we're going to go up this half hour somewhere along the wilds of the coast of British Columbia to talk to another remarkable man who has put his life on the line over and over again to try to bring the truth about what's happening to our West Coast, whether you be Canadian or American, and that the government will not tell us under any circumstance, at least not yet. Dana Dernford, who has his own website, nuclearproctologist.org. I, I, I got that right, didn't I, Dana? Yes, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> got it. I got it. <laughs> How are you? Uh, it's been a rough ride. Big washing machine. <laughs> Yeah. He sees all day today. I got a good story for everybody, though. I think, I think we, you know how I've been. I don't know why either, but I've been adamant that we. I have to go to the Queen Charlotte's for the last yes. thirteen years. Yes, that I've been been, something's go. been driving you. I don't know what it is. It has so. Yeah, and I didn't know what it was, and I, and I, I think I understand. Uh, this is my my opinion only, but we've done the coastline of Canada, the mainland side, folks, and. We found spurs and just uh, less than 100 species species total throughout the entire coastline. Out of over 6,500 that ought to be there. Very visible ones, and and another 5,500 or so of invertebrates uh, mm-hmm. with the backbones, they like little shrimp. Mm-hmm. And so it's been really perplexing. The birds were missing, the insects were missing it, uh, in the last summer. And mm-hmm. so... I get to the Queen Charlotte's, and I've been over here, and I never missed a day. Uh, it's been quite amazing, and it's still got a long way to go. But what I what I discovered over here was extraordinary. I and I couldn't wrap my mind around for the first few days what was going on. I was finding the same species only, nothing new that I had already found along the coastline of Canada, 
And the Queen Charlotte, folks, is 50 miles off the uh, islands, off the coastline of Canada. It's uh-huh. in the middle of nowhere. It's an archipelago. It's 350 kilometers long. Right. And it's uh, all virgin territory. So, Gorgeous, find, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's yeah. stunning. It's unbelievable. There's no industry anywhere. It's just uh, two little small communities. Well, three little tiny communities. And so I get up here, and we're out in the wilds, 100 uh, miles from Queen Charlotte City, where I'm to right now, and it struck me. I was finding the same species, but I was finding them in one sense, uh, if you want to call it that way, plentiful in these days. And it, it dawned on me that the Charlottes had done pretty good, but they had lost all the other species. But the Charlottes is producing all the babies for the coastline of Canada. That's what oh. it appears to me. Oh. Right? right like, uh, there's only seven starfish that we found on the coastline of Canada, but we find seven starfish out here and plenty of them. Uh-huh. Now, the divers a couple of days ago found starfish legs, and there was two of them, and they were horrified because, and really so, but, I mean, the whole seafloor is covered in... in uh, uh, starfish legs, and uh, a lot of leather starfish in particular and just so the it, legs really, just the legs yeah they didn't find the, the body just mm-hmm. the legs everywhere and mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty convinced it's, it's uh, radiation and they've been following it a little bit and and so like I'm pretty sure but I won't know till the whole trip is over to prove that theory and I think we can easily I got, like I got 2200 pictures a day they're harassed by a bunch of uh, teenage sea lions today, but 12 or 14 of them. I got some really good video of them coming right at me, stood up in the water. It was just like the most amazing thing imaginable. My dog is... That's not normal out. behavior, is it? No, I've never seen that before. These were stellar teenagers, what we could, what they call teenagers, I guess. But the species along the coastline, uh, where I was today, uh, skin cuddle, uh, that was absent uh, of most of the species, but you were finding this, this, the two two species in particular of starfish and plenty of them for most of it. And But it, it really does confirm it, what what we're finding along the coastline of Canada, and just little tiny bits here and little tiny bits here where it's plentiful out here and the seeds will come right into that coastline. And that's probably why we're finding those particular species. So the fall of the disposition as it washed down from the mountains, uh, the west side of the Rocky Mountains, everything came towards the Pacific Ocean. And in, like after heavy rains, it could take two weeks for all this stuff to make its way down to the coastline. Right. And that would make sense. Uh, w- that all got wiped out, but the Queen Charlotte's managed to survive because it's isolated. And when it washed off, it diluted, not diluted, I guess that's a terrible word, but it, it was whisked away. There was still major damage here. All the species are missing, except for mm-hmm. the same species we already found. But like, once again, they, they seem healthy and they seem plentiful, even though the divers did find mm-hmm. a seafloor of, um, of uh, starfish legs. Right. But that is quite interesting uh, to see that, you know, where it appears healthy for those species only, but all those other species... Today, there was no whelks to be found anywhere. There was no snails to be found anywhere whatsoever. I couldn't even no find whelks. one. Gone. Like, whelk, whelks is extraordinarily popular. Normally, you would find millions and millions and millions on each yeah. beach on the rock. Uh-huh. And all the mussels were missing. And the algae, there's around 20 species of algae, roughly. And none of, a lot of them look like they're petrified, but they all look uh, really, really bad. They look really unhealthy. And once again, the rocks are beer everywhere else. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think I, I think that might end up being what happened here was the coastline got wiped out, but original disposition, this stuff was sticking to the rocks. Nothing can grow on the rocks. And British Columbia's uh, Queen Charlotte Islands is seeding the coastline of Canada because uh, starfish, in particular, that we're talking about are indigenous to British Columbia, and. Where were they coming from? Well, the Queen Charlotte's 350 miles long. Their seeds are getting washed through the inlets in the islands, the fjords, the 26,000 islands up here. And that's why I was finding the pitlins that we were, that we find. And folks don't understand it. In mm-hmm. an entire day mm-hmm. of hunting at the low tide zone, I could put everything I find in the back of a pickup truck. Wow. And that's 
you shouldn't be able to do that on any beach, let no, alone of course not. the entire, you know, mile after mile after mile. Um, we're coming up to the anniversary of the yeah. fourth Two year. I guess you guys Two days of the beginning of the end. I think as a sign of good faith, the nuclear industry should hang a whole bunch of TEPCO on uh, from poles. Just, just as a sign of good faith, you know, it's just me, right? But, I, uh, I don't think you have a lot of people arguing about that. <laughs> I think they, you know, uh, I, sh I don't like to say stuff like that. No, even it's, though it's, I, even uh, though I would like to hang on to the rope and feel them kicking. Uh, the well, last look how many I've people ever. they've killed. Look how many. Look yeah. how many species. Look how much sea life. Shocking. Every animal. Every animal has no, it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I got no remorse for these people, and yeah. I, I totally, the criminal, I'm totally convinced. criminal bastards. Uh, that's all they are. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, the worst. All right, stand by a minute. We'll come right back with Dana Durnford. Okay, and we're back with Dana Durnford, nuclearproctologist.org, on the website, and I hope you can uh, get there to that website on the Internet and bookmark it and follow his work. When he gets back, eventually, you know, he's going to have a year's worth of work to collate and put up, and I'm hoping that he will be able to produce a documentary about this. None of this BS from the government. They, they just cannot be allowed to get away with this. All right, so where are you right now tonight? I just pulled in here to Queen Charlotte City. That's the central of the island. Big town. Here, the Big town. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Uh, I think there's uh, 1,800 people or something. Oh, there. my. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a big town for this, year, for this coastline. There's not many up here. It's been a washing machine extremely tough. It's been a grind, a pounding grind. Yeah. I just pounded and grind seven hours to get the port. And it's expensive. It's 500 bucks of fuel up, and then grub is ridiculously expensive. Cause you're why, why, uh, why so hard to get the port? Are you fighting against the uh, elements? The, yeah, the ocean up here is really something. Uh, but that, that boat I got, that's a Coast Guard Zodiac. I mean, if I was out there in an 80-foot boat and it sank, that's the boat they would send out to get me. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same yeah. boat. It couldn't really, you can't sink it. And then I got another Zodiac on the roof of that thing. And so even if I tried to tip over, I couldn't tip over because I got that pinned on top of the roof. Ah, well. very smart. I was, up, yeah. I was up to the hot springs today. They had an earthquake there last year or the year before, somewhere in the last two years, and it drained. And so nobody goes there anymore. But if you go hunting around on the shoreline, you'll find the steam coming up, and then you can find big pools of hot water there where you can just I, t I take a, a jug and I just dip it up and pour it over myself. It was really, uh, it was, I just, I had to come to port anyway just to come to a stop, Jeff. I mean, it's yeah. 13 weeks now, nonstop, and I just had to come and tie up to a wharf, and I knew there was a little spot right here where the waves can't get at you, and I just we need a couple of days of sleep and just mm. tie it onto a wharf where I don't have to think about it. And then I can't wait to get back out there. Don't get me wrong. I, I need to do this. This is um, really telling, and we need to see the west. Now, the next jump will be the west side when I head back out. And by then, you know, it will be coming down the inside passage. Today I've seen, uh, now since I guess, folks, I haven't seen a flock, a real flock of birds. Today I didn't really see a flock of birds, but it was a flock of birds, probably 500 birds on the way back, and there was around uh, 50 eagles, and that's, the most eagles I've seen at any given time since huh. August, it's four. Uh -huh. And so to see 50 eagles was really impressive. Um, That's a beautiful sight. Good for you. That was spectacular. I stopped and got pictures of it. And it looked like they were feeding. I mean, this is something we haven't seen along the entire coastline. We should see that every mile. And I covered a few weeks back, I covered over 700 nautical miles and never seen a single flock. But I should have seen 700 flocks in that mile, if not five times that, because that's how, how this coastline used to be, always, no matter where you went. And so all of that is missing. It's just a handful of those species out of 160-odd migratory and 148 residential. There's only a handful throughout the entire coastline, and you're only finding them in tiny groups. 
And so we're in a lot of trouble. And this industry, you know, maybe the best thing that could happen to us is aid starts up a nuclear power plant. I think that'll set the entire planet off <laughs> into a big fireworks. If, mm. if, and they're going to do it. They're threatening yeah. to do it. They're posturing it all the time. But I think that's what will happen, though, is that this planet is ready to erupt. It just needs something to set it off. And, like, my information is not really out there in, this, in the context at all. And outside yourself pushing it out there all the time, it's not really getting pushed out there. And at no, some point, nobody's it, pushing. Yeah. No, no, nobody's pushing except for yourself. And you really, truly are pushing. You haven't stopped pushing. You guys do a fantastic job of it. And is one of the very few out there that actually is a you know like yourself is for some reason how hard is it Jeff to come out and say that they're what they're doing is not that hard is it you know no, you do no, it all the time I, I don't I'm very suspicious of some of these people uh, others are just <laughs> lazy uh, look yeah. I sit at a desk you got you put your life on the line you're out on the water uh, so it's I'm tough. I'm glad yeah. to be a part of a small part of what you're doing and do whatever a I huge can part to of it. Oh, well, yeah, a huge part. I mean, you are you are literally world famous uh, for what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> Maybe uh, one day, but well, I'm sure a lot of people think and, you're and crazy. Not, not me, but the but the information. I don't care. I understand. So much. I we really we don't care. No, we're not in it for ourselves. We know that it's not. No, no. Uh, it's irrelevant. It really truly is. I, I'm just. I want to finish the trip and put together the presentation, put together an actual true documentary. We certainly got the information. Dana, you can that. travel all over the United States and Canada to colleges and put on your presentation. I will, you, too. Yeah, no, I won't stop. Oh, I'll help you I'll promote, promote that all day long. I, uh, yeah, thank you, my friend. Uh, like I say, this is this has turned into what it is because we got no options. Not because we want to do something like this. Not because this was fantasy that oh you know go and do this have a whole lot there's no fun in what i do it's the most boring thing imaginable the beaches are empty it's just unbelievably boring all day and it's so stressful to raise that money it's so stressful to keep the operation afloat to keep everything working all the time so stressful at night time just trying to come to a stop and have a meal and get some sleep and not drag anchor all night long and have the waves pound you all day and all night, relentless, not to the point where you got to come and tie up to a wharf just to escape it and have a couple of days break. But the urgency of it is not, it, my, my brain will not let me stop until we complete it because it has to get done and nobody else is going to do it. And if we don't get the job done, we'll regret that forever. And right now we have succeeded in so many aspects of it. We have rallied together right around this entire planet to pull this off. And once again, it's not just me, and I always see that when I look around me. It's everybody that contributed constantly to make it happen, to keep it going. And that's the only way. And it's just it just barely keeps itself afloat and going the entire time. Yeah. I'm always just, I'm always afraid I'm not going to have enough when I give them the bank card to yeah, pay something. Yeah, yeah, and, Well, and you've I got some, something. you've got, no, you have some wonderful, truly wonderful people backing you and true. backing, true. doing, it's a handful of people doing what the world fun. should yeah. be obsessed and worried about, but they're just not. It's true. It's something they can be proud of, that's for sure. I never let them down. We're not, yeah. this is not, uh, this is all business, 100% business, dedication. He said, I don't miss a day that is, if I'm there, I'm going to go no matter how I feel. I get up. I'm, I'm up every morning at 5 o'clock waiting for that sun to come up, steaming towards the islands. Wow. There's some amazing sunset, uh, sunrises. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I, I can't wait to get that data. I'm quite the dead. I'm not going to get it. So I'm always anxious. I wake up early and I cannot. I can't even. It's impossible to sleep in past 6 o'clock. It can't be done. You still you yeah. have your dog with you, right? I have my puppy with me. That keeps me busy. You got to take her into the beach, and I yeah. cook her each meal. And really, she—you right. know—I got to lift her. She's thirteen odd years old. So I got to lift her in a boat each time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Some hard case. What an amazing she went, dog! She went after the sea lions. <laughs> oh, tough too. I was pretty too. proud of her. <laughs> I was pretty proud of her. I got it on the video. I can't wait to stick it up. There's no That's internet funny. up there. Yeah. There's no internet, so I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. Have you seen Dana? Have you seen many whales at all? 
Well, we did actually. There is a bunch of whales up there in Skin Cuddle. Um, uh-huh. And now, I'm not sure what kind of whales they are. I got quite a lot of pictures. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were slapping their tail. Uh, there was, some of the divers up there were saying that uh, there were mink whales, but uh, they don't look like mink whales. They're too, too big. They're just oh. huge things, 50, 60 feet at least. But there's a lot. I got jumped by Coast Guard this morning. You know, there'll be a long time for you to jump anybody on the beach again. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sell everything you got and get off the coastline routine. Is uh-huh. what I gave them. I said, he said, oh, you know, uh, I heard they're checking for radiation. It's radiation. Look around you. <laughs> I told him. I said, where's all the species to? You guys are not doing your job. They're, 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 you chased me right up to the beach. <laughs> What do you mean and he chased you? Know, he, 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 he chased, chased you? Me, but I, I, oh, I was good. Oh, you did. I had, oh, my, I had my big boat parked out uh, anchored off, and I had the yeah, little yeah. Zodiac on the beach. But they came all the way into the beach just to yell, to yell out and ask me what I was up to. <laughs> oh, see, like they <laughs> so didn't I told know. them. No, I told I mean, they went and looked at nuclearproctologist.org on the side of it. They said, I'm checking for damage from the radiation fallout from Japan. They said, you finding any... I said, everything is missing. I said, what are you, blind? And I, I named off the species to them. And I think I scared the daylights out of them because they went away. But I wasn't, I never went easy on them. I was pretty Good. angry. I don't, uh, and I don't I know where that came from. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know where it came from, but I was angry at these It came people. from your soul is where it came from. Uh, I was heartbroken, you know. I was on this beach after beach after beach, and this, this little group of islands this morning. It was blowing yeah. really hard, and I got up tight to it, and, and I got under the oil and got up on the beaches because you couldn't mm-hmm. do anything else. Mm-hmm. And it was stunning that I couldn't find anything in the microscopic world or the small world. And so we made it through the night. My phone made it. Good stuff, folks. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you, All my right. friend. Bless you. Take care. Uh, talk Thank to you, you next week. All righty. You be well. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Right. Dana Durnford, and he is uh, one remarkable, brave man. Nuclearproctologist.org. Check it out. And uh, when he's done, he's going to have one hell of a documentary. He can go around to colleges, and I hope you'll bring him to your town. All you got to do is pay his transportation. He'll put on a, an event that you will not forget. I can guarantee it. All right. That's our Monday. Uh, we're done. Back tomorrow and with the day. Now you take care. Thanks so much for being here. You are appreciated.